just that data alone will be such an undeniable slap in the face moment that Wall Street will be absolutely unable to turn like to look elsewhere and think that this is not going to be just a runaway success for Tesla. I mean, uh, robo taxi in June, like I don't want to bring up the FSD crash, but I also did notice there was an FSD crash on Twitter that seems like it may be legit and there are going to be more FSD crashes. Um, it's not going to be perfect. Um, so I'm just really curious on you guys, like, you know, we're huge Tesla fans. Like where's your head at with robo taxi rollout in June? Uh, like the the market's expectations of how that's going to go. What do you guys think about that? Did you want to go first, Hans? I, I've taken up a lot of airtime. I don't want to talk to Um Yeah, I mean, I think we're generally on the right track. The crash does, you know, it's like it's expected that we're going to have some crashes. Like it's not a perfect system. The whole goal is to be way safer than a human, but like you can still crash quite a bit and be way safer than a human when you're putting you know millions of miles of fsd usage uh up on the board you know every week every month so yeah i can't say that i'm completely surprised that there was one um in fact i'm almost surprised that we haven't seen more before this that said because this does happen to be you know one of the first really visible and probably legitimate crashes that it may like it depends on what the root cause is there's a possibility that it causes some delay to the june timeline um i don't think it's high probability i just wanted to throw that out there that like it is possible that something like that could slow us down just a little bit overall in the grand scheme of things nothing uh you know nothing major but there's there's a chance that said man like you know, I don't have hardware four on a 2018 Model 3 with hardware three. I finally just got 1263 the other day, and it is so good. Like the pace of progress from like the first version of 12 on hardware three, then, you know, getting better to the 12.3 releases, then the 12.5 releases, like each time they have released a major dot update it has been a significant improvement over the previous one it's like and it's usually just a couple of months in between those and so even on hardware three i can feel like we are on that trajectory you know we're not there yet but it's just getting better and better and better faster and faster and knowing that you know all of the different levers that the tesla ai team has to pull to get us over the finish line like i think it's very very reasonable for us to start offering robo taxi rides in June. And potentially, I think um, I haven't gone and watched it, but it sounded uh, from some comments that I saw on X, like Franz said specifically Cybercab yeah, was going to be the car that launches in June, which is kind of crazy. And, you know, they obviously had what 20 of them at the 1010 event or something like that. So they've got enough of them if they are willing to use those like vehicles um, to at least start something and great to use them and start collecting some data. So that would be super cool to see actual cyber cabs rolling around. And I'm sure there will be some Model 3s, some Model Ys as well. Um, but man, to see those rolling around in Austin, that's going to be Unbelievable. awesome. And like, yes, they're probably going to launch with, um, at, at the very least, with remote intervention capabilities. So there will be, you know, people watching them in some control center somewhere, um, just like with Waymo. But the difference here is, you know, people keep saying, oh, you know, they're finally just going to catch up to Waymo. And so then they're, you know, not going to like, it's no big deal that. Tesla is finally going to launch their own robo taxi service because, you know, they're just like catching up. They're still behind and like they're always going to be behind. It's like, I don't think you understand the difference in architecture. You know, just like Farzad said a thousand times, like it's a thousand dollar computer instead of a twenty thousand dollar computer. It's. Thirty dollars worth of cameras instead of, you know, fifty thousand dollars worth of LIDARs like. 
the architecture is completely different. It's completely scalable. And then when you saw throw on top of that, the fact that, okay, in order to make the cheap computer and the cheap cameras work, you have to have like way better software. And <clears throat> the fact that they have decided this was a software problem, gone all in on the software and that FSD version 13 version 12.6.3, like these things work every on every road in the United States. There's not a single Waymo that can drive on every road in the United States. They can't drive at 99.9% .9 of them. With or without a person paying for it. Like they just can't drive their period. And so it's obvious that once they figure out how to, like it, it may start out with way fewer rides than Waymo. But once they figure out the mechanics of offering the service, their ability to go from, we offered 1% of the rides that Waymo offered to we did a thousand times the number of rides that Waymo offered. It's guaranteed and it's a very short period of time, a couple of years maximum. Uh, and you know it's probably like 12 months from the time when we offer less rides than Waymo until the time where we're 10 X the rides that Waymo offered and you, that data, just that data alone will be such an undeniable, like slap in the face moment that wall street will be absolutely unable to turn like to look elsewhere and think that this is not going to be just a runaway success for Tesla and that some other company is going to win robo taxis. That's why Uber is fucked. Like, I, I, and like that exact equation is why Uber is fucked. What are more FSD capable Teslas in the United States than there are Uber drivers? Like, I don't understand why, why that point is, is difficult to grasp for some people. There are more FSD capable cars in the United States than Uber drivers. What does that mean? The second Tesla turns on self-driving capability for all those cars and all those jurisdictions, okay? the cost of transportation drops by at least 50%. How, in what world can anyone compete with that? Forget Waymo. How does Uber compete with that? How does Legacy Auto compete with that? You, you're removing the driver, and then all of a sudden, in every jurisdiction, you're going to have cars that can drive themselves. There are more cars than drivers in the United States for Uber, and then Tesla's going to be cranking three, four, five million of these per year in the next couple of years. Right, the entire robo taxi fleet, Cybertruck Y three S X, Cybercab, the van, whatever else they come out with, these are all self driving capable cars. And it, and and if it doesn't become obvious in June, okay, I I don't know what else needs to happen. If it if it works in Austin in June, it will work in L A whenever. It will work in New York whenever. It will work in Florida whenever. It will work in Shanghai whenever. It will work in basically everywhere except for maybe parts of. India and you know and parts of the Middle East and parts of Africa with some of the insane traffic that they have over there. But like the the Western markets and China and some other markets are massively ripe for this technology to take hold. And so the June the June release, I think what that says is, yo, like this is real for the people that are waiting for it to be real. And if it is real, then the question becomes, will Wall Street price this in now? Like, will, will they price in the next five to 10 years worth of earnings for that business this year or next year? Or will they wait until it ramps more and out, like more, will they wait until it starts getting turned on in more and more jurisdiction? The outcome is obvious. I just, I, I don't know of any other car company that can literally spit out millions of units of self-driving cars per year. That, that company does not exist. Does not exist. So I think there's a few, there's so many different angles to this. Cause I feel like I always end up playing the devil's advocate, but yes. I'm, I think the few things I wrote down, I think the, um, launching with cyber cab, so such a good idea. It's like, why, like, let's make it a splash. Sometimes I feel like Tesla like doesn't, is just kind of so engineering and data focused. They forget about like the magic of the consumer experience a little bit. Like when you get your Tesla for the first time, you're just like, Oh, just get in your Tesla. It's not. And it's a little bit less like. I think I feel like it could be a bit more magical, honestly, because it's such an amazing product. And so I think they need to focus on that with the robo taxi launch, like to give it like the sizzle. I personally would at least like make it the cyber cab, like launch it with the cyber cab. It's only cyber cabs. They're gold. Like everyone's going to notice it. They have the butterfly doors. Like 
that's viral. Like even if there's only five of them, there's only 800 Waymos in the world and they're doing like a hundred million revenue run rate and they're everywhere in these cities. So even 20 to 50 cars would actually be like a lot in Austin. So I think, and it's just like, dude, with the cyber cab, you guys are getting me hyped. I know the Franz thing, he said it, but it's like, that would just be so cool to like symbolize we're here versus just a generic Model Y. Also, I think Waymo has teleoperation. So Tesla is going to need to teleoperate these vehicles. Like, at least I don't know if they're gonna, but I think this is a big part of like, yeah, they're autonomous. They can drive themselves, but like things can still go wrong. You, they're going to need to have people monitoring these cars 24 seven, like teleoperated. And I think Waymo does that already. So that's one part of it that is going to make it less profitable off the bat. Then in terms of geographies, Europe, bad, China, good. Like Europe hates Elon Musk, very resistant to like a lot of changing innovation, like a pretty bureaucratic government system for them to make a rapid change. And they've already been super slow to adopt autopilot. I think it's going to take them the longest. Flip side of that is you have somewhere like China, totally opposite side of the government, very onboard, very pushing this technology, massive opportunity for Tesla there. So geographically, it's going to be very interesting. Also, I think it is being priced in because Tesla was seven billion in earnings last year. Even if we assume those triple immediately to twenty one billion without Robo Taxi because they're crushing on other stuff, like we're still a little bit over. Like I still think there's like half a billion of market cap that's Robo Taxis. Like, but obviously if it's a few trillion, like it's just a small option. Like they're not pricing it in fully, but they are pricing it in a little bit. So now we have this dance of how fast does the rollout occur? What do we see on the financial statements? That is what no one is talking about, and I have no idea yeah. of. I don't think it's going to be pretty off the bat. Because I think it's a going to be small revenue. You have a big upfront cost of the car. It takes even if it's like a three year payback on the car, which would be insanely fast. That's still three years from June 2025 to be profitable on those first cars. So at what point do Tesla investors look for the vision? How fast is the scale? Because we need to hit this and having billions of revenue pretty soon, or I think Wall Street will get impatient. And I think that you pay that dance of how fast we roll this out. Where's the safety? What are the margins? Where do we price it? Like. I have so many questions and I'm so curious and I have heard gossip from in Tesla. This was a while ago that they hadn't really planned that much of that out. And I think they are planning it out now, but I think that's like, not like a bad thing, but like that's how Tesla works. Like they just like t focus on one thing, then move to the next thing and are like very like focused. And so I just, there's something in the back of my head, I can't describe it, just feels like there's a hiccup on the rollout of FSD that like, when I hear what you say, Farzad, is gonna happen. Like in between this, like tens of millions of robo taxis everywhere and Tesla being the world's biggest company on this and now is not a perfect this, there's gonna be some hiccup sure. and I can't explain it. Maybe it's a crash that Europe takes out of context and then people freak out and start vandalizing Tesla cars and they no one wants to, I, I don't know, but like, or maybe just the margins suck because they have to have a teleoperator and it just isn't super profitable right away. And then Wall Street's like, well, pff, we want we thought it was gonna be super profitable right away. So there's so many like, I'm just fascinated by how this is gonna play out because we've never seen a company of this scale roll out something this consequential. And financial markets are having a tough time grappling with it. It's like Elon Musk always comes through eventually with his innovations. So if he comes through with the self-driving car, it's going to create the world's largest company. So you can't discount that at that this point. But it's e also easy to say Waymo's taken 10 or 15 years to roll this out. Like there's, they're moving at a snail's pace for a reason. There's so many bureaucratic, just like things that could go wrong on the road. So I don't know. I'm curious about that food for thought. Like, I'm holding my Tesla stock, but I'm also like not holding my breath for the stock to just double again. Like I think it's more likely that it gets cut in half again and then starts its big move. Um, but I, I, I don't know, you know. You wanna go? Well, and I always do remember the comment that Elon made back uh, maybe like the first AI day or something. Uh, it was one of the, you know, one of the investor meetings of some sort where he said that once they get to the point of having robo taxis, they're planning to run the company at cash flow break even as they like they're just going to continue to reinvest every Very important dollar point. that they bring in to grow as you know as aggressively as possible without leaning into the balance sheet yeah so amazon did that for a while and got away with it with its and putting operating cash flow at the top of its uh, press releases for earnings 
but that is interesting. I'm curious. I want to let Farzad time, chime in, but I just wanted to be like, whoa, that's a great point, Hans. And I didn't, I, I feel like I heard Elon say that, but I didn't like drill it into my head of like, he's literally telling us like Tesla's making a couple billion a quarter now. So he's basically saying the money we're making now vanishes. So is Wall Street on the same page with that? I would be careful. Because so, Wall Street so do you think when earnings vanish, usually. For sure. Do, do you think... So, okay, so do you think CyberCab is a Tesla-only product, or do you think they sell CyberCab to fleet operators? Well, you gave me the actually greatest idea ever, which is they should be like Boeing. Yeah. Or like, I had never thought of that. Maybe it's not a great idea, but I think it was cool. And outside the box of like, wait, what if they're like a Boeing or Airbus and they sell these to let them get tricked out by other companies? I think that might be a phase two plan, but I think phase one is vertically integrate and operate. I think that's so just you think like, phase one cyber cab is like literally just a Tesla product. They're going to eat the entire the, the the cost of the car and they're going to try to ROI it over time. They're going to run it as a so. OK, so 100%. doesn't that mean by default it, they're only going to be limited to like 50,000 units per year? Why would they make their most easily easy to build car their lowest volume? Well, I think you have a dance of Elon's hubris of optimism of how fast this ramps and then the reality and we know where he stands on that so he's going to be but yeah that's a that's a great point and um cyber trucks already at what a uh, uh, five thousand per week and if you if you looked at him in the comp, comp or in the conference call like if you really listen to what he's saying it sounds like because pierre Faragou, the cool analyst he asked him at the end of like can i just drive down to austin in june and put my car on fs on like the network you know like what's good with that and that's where you could tell elon's kind of he hasn't thought about that they don't give a shit about that they're not that's not on the radar like that's phase two like yes that's gonna happen but right now tesla's planning one thing and that's austin in june they have a couple cabs out there that they're monitoring every little inch of with teleoperation and i hope they're cyber cabs and they're only going to focus on cyber cab for that service mm -hmm. for a very long time i don't think elon wants to even ever sell cars like he wants to stop selling cars and just only sell like rides basically and robots. I don't know. That's kind of wh where I feel like his his pull is. 